I'm Sarah. Last night, we had a double eviction on Big Brother 24. As a reminder, once we hit the jury phase, I no longer get to speak directly to the house guests. I submit my questions to PR. They ask and then send me the answers. And here is Michael's exit interview. Did your Big Brother Bible turn out to be helpful while playing the game? I think my Big Brother Bible helped me out a little bit. I've always said the mistake that super fans make going into the game is thinking that, hey, I know all these stats and statistics, that's going to help me, when that is absolutely not the case. You know, knowing about records and past seasons doesn't necessarily make you better at interacting with other people. So I never wanted to fall into that trap. Part of my Big Brother Bible, I do have some things about competitions and strategies um, that I picked up over the years. So I think that part helped, but, you know, Knowing who won the most HOH is or how many POVs Janelle has didn't necessarily help my game, but uh, I don't think it hurt me at all to know that info, but definitely some of my strategies that I had noticed and recorded, I think, came into play. Remember that first episode with this cute little binder? I mean, you know us here at Entertainment, we nerd out. We love a spreadsheet. We love a binder. I appreciated it but always being in the house is going to be different than us watching and compiling our stats from home. Michael, congratulations on beating Janelle's veto record. Was there a moment when you realized you were going to have to win out? I definitely felt like I would have to win my way to the end. I think last week I definitely was feeling that way. Um, Brittany was a really good ally to me and she was sharing what people were saying and she was telling me that people were definitely noticing all my comp wins and not only that I was winning, but that I was beating people by a lot and that people were saying, you know, if Michael weren't here, it would have been close between all of us. So I think at that moment, I, I knew I'd been getting the feeling for the past couple of weeks as I kept winning that people were probably getting a little salty. Uh, at first when I'd win a competition, people were like really excited for me and now it was just kind of like, Yay, he won again. <laughs> People are definitely not excited anymore. So I knew that, you know, my time was coming if I didn't win. Um, so I realized that was probably my path to the end as much as I didn't want it to be. Michael was in an interesting position during the HOH going into Brochella and Dyer Fest, where he could sort of set up who was going to be HOH with him as long as he could continue winning. So I wanted to ask about his thought process there. In the knockout style HOH for Brochella and Dire Fest, you chose Terrence to go against Jasmine, leaving Turner for you to knock out, guaranteeing one leftover HOH and one non-leftover HOH. What was your strategy there? I think that sums up my strategy perfectly. In that moment, I was like, okay, do we take the risk? Do I put Turner and Jasmine against each other to maybe guarantee that both Turner and I can win and leftovers have control on both sides? But there was also the risk that we both would lose and then we would have no control. So I felt the safer option was to make sure that we had one HOH guaranteed and then, you know, knowing that there were only going to be five people in each, each side of the house, at final five, there can be some tricky strategies where you can force someone to go up on the block depending on who wins the veto. So I was like, if we have one HOH, maybe there's something we can pull on the other side to get the other non-leftover up on the block. Because I knew that if I was picking, I was going to pick the one non-leftover and leave the other for the other HOH to pick to guarantee that there was a chance all the leftovers could make it through the week. And this week, we saw Michael actively keeping Turner safe when most of the internet and fandom was screaming, take Turner out. And then sure enough, Turner is the HOH who takes Michael out. So I had to ask, do you regret keeping Turner safe this week? I don't. And maybe I should, being that he's the HOH that took me out. But I've always said uh, while I was in the house that Turner did what he did last week um, because he thought it was the right thing to do. And I didn't want the lesson here to be that if you do the right thing that you're punished for it. I think that it can be the case where you do the right thing and it doesn't have to come at this huge personal cost to you. So I don't regret keeping Turner safe. I think I'd be here regardless because I think Monty probably would have been the one to win. 
in the double eviction. And we obviously saw what happened when Monty won the veto. So I think I'd be here regardless. Um, so I, I don't necessarily regret that. I agree with Michael. And if you've been watching my recaps, I've been pretty vocal about everyone's coming for him in the house. Taking out Terrence makes the most sense for his game if you're assuming everyone else is still coming for Michael. And if Turner wasn't in the house, if he had gone out first, I do believe Monty would have still taken out Michael. And I think Taylor would have taken out Michael. Brittany would have been the only person probably not going to take out Michael. So I agree. Even though some people say maybe Michael won too many comps when he didn't need to, you need to recognize that with those comp wins, he kept Brittany and Taylor safe that whole time when uh, Taylor especially was a big old target. Michael, you seemed very loyal to Brittany and Taylor. Was that your true final three? Brittany and Taylor were my true final three. Ideally, I wanted to be there in the end with them. Just on a personal level, the three of us had been close since week one. Um, we were all in danger that first week, and we should not have been in the house altogether. Um, so I thought it would have been a great story. I also, um, with that final three, you know, I felt confident that I could make it to the final two. And, I, you know, I was hoping to have that story, you know, that underdog story that we made it and still hopefully come out on top. So I think there were, you know, personal reasons for wanting that and strategic reasons. But I was definitely most loyal to Brittany and Taylor. Oh, that would have been such a good story. I mean, honestly, he was such an underdog on the block first week, had to save himself with the veto, not to mention all of the nonsense with Taylor this season. Having those three at the end would have been such an amazing story. And if Taylor and Brittany could have pulled out a win to knock Michael out at final three, like Steve did with Vanessa, that would have been amazing, iconic, absolutely insane. But more than likely, he would have been able to take himself, if that was the final three, take himself to the final two. Although Taylor has come in second to him many times. So you never know what those end game comps. I truly loved watching Michael play this season. I'm bummed that he's in the jury house now, but he needed to be taken out. The other house guests would have looked idiotic had they not taken him out last night in the double. It's not often that we get someone who is a super fan, who understands strategy, making smart moves, and can win comps. We rarely see that in the Big Brother house. So I loved having it this season. Let me know your thoughts on Michael's answers. How do you feel about his game in general and him being in jury now? And don't forget to like this video, you guys. I'll see you next time.